right so for this question we'll be looking at angles of elevation this question covers angles of elevation so the question says the diagram below not drawn to scale shows a vertical tower bt so this here represents the tower bt fit a flagpole tp so this here is from t to p so as you can see here this is actually supposed to be a flag okay so this in essence is a flag that we have here so this flag is mounted on the pole bt so a point r is on the same horizontal ground as b so right here you can see that here this part here represents the horizontal ground so we can use green for the grass so just imagine this br was the grass now label the diagram to show 35 degrees 42 degrees the right angle and the 60 meters so we said from b to r represents the ground which is 60 meters we also have what they told us our angle angles of elevation so remember angles of elevation they always come from the horizontal so the horizontal would be a line running from left to right so this is what we call the horizontal if we view our perspective going up from there we call it the angle of elevation so this would go to our line of sight say for instance a bird was here and someone was trying to look at the bird what they are looking at essentially is the bird here through what we call the line of sight now the angle for them looking upwards from the horizontal, which is this, will be considered the angle of elevation. So in that instance, that means that our angle of elevation in this case must come from the horizontal. And our horizontal is this b to r now we look at the angles of elevation of t and p from r at 35 degrees and 42 degrees respectively so when they say respectively they mean we are going in that particular order so if we have t first they are saying that the angle of t from r is the first one which is 35 you notice how t was mentioned first so t matches with 35 likewise p goes second which matches with 42 so t comes first then p so the angles here 35 degrees then 42 degrees would follow that order so t is 35 degrees now it's coming from r just so we go upwards for the angle of elevation from r to t then this is the angle we reach at t so this angle here would be 35 degrees now the next one says is the angle of elevation from r again but it goes to p so we do the same thing again we always measure from the horizontal there's a temptation to put that angle between here but no that is not the case what you would have to do is always go from the horizontal as it relates to angles of elevation as well as angles of depression so we have to be careful because that is one misconception that usually messes up students so you have to be conscious of that and always know that measuring the angle of elevation we start from the horizontal as well as the angle of depression so in this case we're starting from from here which is the horizontal the green line for our grass and we go up here so this part here is represented as 42 degrees now we need to put a right angle so this here is the right angle how do i know that it has a vertical tower and horizontal ground so if the tower is vertical that means it goes straight up and we have a horizontal which goes straight from left to right that means the angle between them must be 90 degrees so we label the diagram which is our first part so what we need to calculate now is the height of the tower which is bt now if i'm looking at this i could almost draw this like a separate triangle right so if i'm looking at that section bt if you notice it forms its own triangle here so take note of this part here notice how it forms its own triangle here bt going to r right so we have this triangle here inside of here is 35 and we know the distance from here to here which is 60 meters we also know that this is a right angle right here what we need to find is this height here because that's b and t okay so when we have right angle triangles we can use pythagoras theorem to calculate a length once we have two lengths but we can also use the trigonometric ratios we use what we call soka toa so what these represent are the trig ratios for right angles now the s is for sine the c is for cosine and the t is for tan if we are using the o and the h together that means we're using sine if we're using the a and the h together we're using cosine if we're using a o and a a together we're using 10. Now, in this case here, O stands for the opposite, A stands for the adjacent, and H stands for the hypotenuse. So we need to identify that as these are lines in a right angle triangle. So when we have a line that's opposite to the right angle, 
so this is the right angle here the line opposite to this we would call that the hypotenuse now in this case you're not looking for that length so the hypotenuse isn't important right now but i'm labeling it to figure out the other parts okay so now i'm looking at this angle here 35 now the line opposite of that particular angle is referred to as the opposite okay so right away you can see that i'm trying to calculate the opposite so this is very important to me the opposite so as you can see here only two of them have the opposite i cannot use this one in this particular case because it does not have the opposite in it so what this now means is if i have the hypotenuse and the opposite the only thing that i have left is the a which is the adjacent so once i have identified the opposite and the hypotenuse that makes it easy for me so this here is the adjacent okay now i have a length available for the adjacent and i need to find the opposite i cannot use the age because i don't have a length for that so it won't be of any use to me however i can use the opposite and the adjacent why use this opposite and adjacent 10 so i can use 10 so in this case this would not be useful for me so how this works now is we can say that the formula is how it is written so tan angle is equal to opposite over adjacent now we have an angle so the angle is 35 so we could say tan 35 is equal to the opposite which we don't know over the adjacent which is 60. now the next thing we need to do is work out what tan 35 is in order to do that we must use it in a calculator so we have a scientific calculator here we are looking for tan 35 so i have tan here so i could press 35 and tan 35 gives me 0.7 0 0.0207532 but when we're doing this we try to take three decimal places so as you can see here 0 0.700 so this two next to it here is less than five so this zero would stay so essentially it would just be 0 0.700 so i can say that tan 35 is 0 0.700 which is equal to o over 60. so to make this any use to me i need to put this as a fraction so any number as a fraction goes over one now what i'm gonna do now to solve is cross multiply so i'm gonna multiply o by one and then 60 by 0 0.7 so 0 0.700 times 60 is equal to o times one so therefore if i work this out in my calculator now i should get a value of o which is 0 0.700 times 60 is 42 so that means this is 42 meters so the height of the tower bt is 42 meters so from here to here is 42 meters so we just worked out what this is 42 meters so the next part wants us to figure out the height of the flagpole pt so this is pt here so we're looking at the height from here up so that's the height that we need to find now in order to find that height what we would need to do is find the height of the overall so if i could figure out the height from the bottom to the top what i could then do is subtract these values and i'll find this little piece so think of it like this if someone is standing here and they are six feet and then someone else stands next to them who is four feet now this six feet represents this over here and this four feet represents this father two here now for us to calculate this little piece here all we would need to do is say six take away four which is two so the difference in height is two feet so if we could find the overall height of b to p then we could just subtract that with the father two and we'll be able to find pt all right so if you look at this now we have this outer triangle here is what we're going to be looking at here so this outer triangle represents b to p and we also have the value inside here the angle which is 42 degrees okay we know this is a right angle and we also have the distance from here to here which is 60 meters back to what we did last time we have to identify the opposite hypotenuse and adjacent so in this case same applies we know that here is a hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle and now we know that opposite the angle is the opposite and this is what we are trying to calculate we also have this here which is 60 which has to be the adjacent it's the only thing left and we do have a length for that so in this case we're using the opposite and the adjacent does sine use the opposite and the adjacent no it only uses the opposite and hypotenuse does cosine use the opposite and adjacent no it uses adjacent and hypotenuse so the only thing we have that uses both of these would be 10 so therefore in this case we can say that literally 10 angle is equal to opposite over adjacent
10 again. So this time our angle is 42 degrees. So we could say 10 42 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is 60. Now remember, we're using the angle 42, which we got from this. It's not to be confused with what we got here. So we're using angle 42. It's just a coincidence that we have the same value. Now, 10 42 is equal to over 60. What did we do last time? We calculated 10 42. So calculating 10 42 2 we said 10 4 2 and we got 0 0.900 this 4 is less than 5 so the 0 would remain remember to always have your calculator in degrees when using these trig ratios always remember that because if you put it in red you'll get a different answer okay notice our different answer that is why we have to keep it in degrees if we get this part on our calculator wrong we get a wrong answer okay so this was equal to 0 0.900 equal to o over 60 and remember last time we made it into a fraction anything as a fraction is itself over one so then now what we can do is cross multiply where we multiply the 0 0.9 to the 60 and the o to the one so what we have now is 0 0.900 times 60 is equal to to o times 1. This o would be equal to 0 0.900 times 60. We get 54. So our answer here is 54, which means that the height from here to the top is actually 54 meters. So now to work out this whole piece here, you would have to subtract 54 and 42. So PT is equal to 54 minus 42, which is 12 meters. So this little piece here is 12 meters. So this flagpole that we have here is 12 meters, which we worked out for this. And our height from here to here is part of 2 meters. All right, so that's it for this question. All right, so next question now. It says the diagram below, not drawn to scale. GH is a vertical pole standing on a horizontal plane. So this here from G to H is a pole. So unlike the last question, they didn't give us the height of the pole. The last question gave us a length from a given point that they were looking at. So this here standing on a horizontal plane and H, J, and K are points on the horizontal plane. So it's standing from a horizontal plane, which implies that this is a 90 degree angle. Now the next thing says, GH is 12 meters, which we already was given, and the angles of elevation of the top of the pole G from J and K respectively. J and K are 32 degrees and 27 degrees respectively. Remember what this means. So J matches with 32 and K matches with 27. So at J, the angle of elevation, remember we have to come from our horizontal to get to our line of sight. So this here is 32 degrees. And then from K, we have 27 degrees. So we just label the diagram with our angles. So the next thing is to calculate the length of H j so as you can tell we have a right angle triangle again so if we were to sketch there we would have this being h here is h here is g and here is j so right now i'm just focusing on this portion of the triangle so in here is 32 degrees and we already have here which is 12 meters right angle triangle so same thing like last time we had so ka to wa so this 12 meters is opposite the angle which represents the opposite and opposite the right angle we have the hypotenuse so we have opposite and what we are trying to find would be the adjacent so we have opposite and we're trying to find adjacent so which one of these sine cosine o and a it's only 10 so we can't use these so 10 has o and a in its formula so then we could say that the tan angle is equal to O over A. So we could say also that tan dotted 2, because remember we have 32 degrees here, which is this part here, is equal to O, which is 12 over A. So you know what we have to do now? We need to go in a calculator. Notice how these things are the same process over and over and over. You just need to identify and understand the process. Once you understand the process, <laughs> literally you're just repeating the same thing over and over and over. So we come here now and we could say 10 dot 2, which is equal to 0 0.624886 and so forth. But remember, we are always take three decimal places but as you can see next to the four is the eight which is higher than five therefore we would change this four to a five so we'd have 0 0.625 so therefore we could say that 0 0.625 is equal to 12 over a we do what we did last time put this over one turn it into a fraction essentially anything as a fraction is itself over one next step you got it 
we cross multiply so this multiply by this is equal to this multiply by this so what we would have now is 0 0.625 times a which is equal to 12 times 1 so basically we'll have 0 0.625 a which is equal to 12 times 1 12 now to get a by itself we have to divide both sides by 0 0.625 now the reason why is because 0 0.625 is being multiplied to a so we do the opposite of multiplying which is dividing so we have 0 0.625 and then this one here is divided by 0 0.625 so then we'll be left with a is equal to 12 divided by 0 0.625. Now our answer is 19.2. And if you notice with our question here, it says calculate to one decimal place. So that would be perfect. So we have 19.2 meters. So from here to here is 19.2 meters. All right. So we have 19.2 meters. So now we have to find the length of jk so from here to here now this should bring back a memory to you if you really sat down and watch your first question you realize that in this case you want us to figure out jk which is the same concept like before you want the full length if we could find that full length and then subtract 19.2 and you'll get the answer that we need so because of that we're going to look at the overall triangle so in this case now we would have the triangle you know and here is right angle triangle here now based on this outer triangle here is 27 degrees so this here would be 0 0.510 which is equal to 12 over a now you know we put this as a fraction so it's self over one now what we have to do now is cross multiply so we cross multiply so then we'll end up with 0 0.510 times a which is equal to 12 times one so we'll end up with 0 0.510 a is equal to 12 so we divide both sides by 0 0.510 to figure out what a is so then once we do that we we'll get the value of a so a is equal to 12 divided by 0 0.51 so we say 12 divided by 0 0.5 Five one zero, which is twenty three point. And remember, it told us to one decimal place. We could leave it to twenty three point five. See, it said one decimal place. So that's twenty three point five meters. So the overall length here is twenty three point five meters. So the, if this full length is twenty three point five meters, that must mean that j to k must be equal to twenty three point five minus nineteen point two. So 23.5 minus 19.2. This gives us 4.3. So our answer for this is 4.3 meters. So from here to here is 4.3 meters. So we walk this out, this and this. Now bear in mind, these Sokatoa trig ratios, remember we only use these when we are using it in the context of right angle triangles.